Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahadatin abada. Arani amillahi wa dhalihi. Allahumma atina min ladunka rahma wa alimna min ladunka ilma. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. نوينا التعن ما وتعني وتذكر وتذكر النفع والانتفاع والفائدة والاستفادة والحس على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة عن الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقرب ثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية من رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني مشرب السوافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني ومشرب السوافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني ومشرب السوافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ألهمنا علم نفقه به أمرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسلك فهما النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهم الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا رحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا رحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا رحم الراحمين اللهم يا معلم إبراهيم علمنا ويا مفهم سليمان فهمنا ويا مؤتي داود الحكمة آتنا الحكمة وأصلحنا اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات وبهم وافتحنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه رجل عمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ووفاء يفقه قولي وصل لساني وادي قلبي عن كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارف والفقه في الدين مع كمال إخاص سر واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ ونفع والانتفاع وخيرة الدارين وعلم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله we continue for book من هجل عابدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من كتاب from the book من هجل عابدين إلى جنة رب العالمين the path of the worshipful servant to the guidance of the Lord of the Worlds that leave the Imam al-Mujadid Hujjid al-Islam al-Muslimin Zain al-Din Abi Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Abd bin Ahmad bin bin Ahmad al-Ghazali al-Thusi al-Tabarani al-Shafi'i رضي الله عنه ونفعنا الله به وبعلومه في الدارين نعم قال by the great scholar um, and the beauty of this religion the proof of this religion Imam Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad Al-Ghazali Imam Al-Ghazali Al-Tusi Al-Tabarani Al-Shafi'i May Allah have pleasure on him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send, uh, uh, bestow his mercy on him and reward him greatly on our behalf to where he has said and may, be, and may Allah benefit us by him and by his knowledge in both abodes may, where he has said right, so we have come to the point right, of uh, three uh, of, of basically what would push a person right, so, so, uh, so what, would, what would push a person right, into um, having hope and having fear 
and he mentions about three things that, that, uh, that, that a human being needs to always remember um, and, and ponder you know, about. And there's four, sorry, upon four things that a human being says, needs to, to always ponder about. And they are death, the grave, the day of judgment, and then heaven and hell. Right? So whatever you go through in life, whatever question you have um, in life, you go back to these to this four methods. Right? Do you want to, you know, how will this affect your death? You know, whatever you're about to engage in, whatever you're about to do, you ask yourself the question, how will this affect your death? Because at the point of death is when everything, all of reality, you know, comes to you at the point of death. And then you ask yourself, how will this manifest for you in your grief? Right? Is this going to be against you or for you in your grief? Then you ask yourself, how will this appear on the day of judgment? Is this something that is going to help you or something that you wish would, you do, would, would not come out on the day of judgment? And then lastly, how will this uh, you know, be for you uh, uh, with regards to your eternal abode, whether in paradise or in the hellfire? Right? So, so four situations for us to ponder about. Right? And so when we look at these four situations, right, every person, right, every person, when, you come, when you're faced with these four absolute facts, Right, and these are realities. Eh? They're absolute facts. They are realities um, that no human being can run away from, regardless of their belief. Right? No human being can run away from. They will have to face it. So the last, the, so when, when you're faced with this, then then everything becomes clear to you. Right? Everything. The one who who would deny or try to justify all that he's doing, if he's true to himself and he places himself in the position facing death or in the position facing his grief, or in the position um, uh, imagining a day of judgment, or in the position heaven or hell, right? then uh, to see if a deed that you're doing, is it heaven or is it hell, right? then um, you will, you, you, if you are sincere about it, then there is enough, you know, subhanahu, there is enough right, for, you to be, for you to guide yourself with respect to what you want to do and what you don't want to do in this very, very short span you know, of a few years in this, uh, in this dunya. The last lesson, we were going through the first one, right, which is, um, we were going through the first one, which is, which is death, right, which is death. We finished, we finished the entire part about death, right, so, and we spoke about, um, and, he, and he mentioned stories, right, basically, yeah, he mentioned stories about those who have, um, who had terrible deaths and those who have easy and good deaths, and he told a story about the one who had, who was walking around with Namima and Hasad. And may we, you know, beware of these, um, uh, Namima has said, and also he took the haram. Uh, he went, he, he tried to seek, um, he tried to seek solution or cure from the haram. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place in our hearts a repulsion for everything that is haram. So the next one that we're going into after death, after the reflection of death, on, on, on death. And, and the talk can, can go on for a long time, mashallah. In the Iha Ulumuddin, uh, Imam Al-Ghazali goes on for a long time talking about death, death, death. You know, subhanAllah, to the point whereby all, you, all they, will, they, will, they, will, they will fill up your, your, your heart and your heads, you know, from if you go through the chapter on death in the Iha Ulumuddin, everything around you will remind you of death. And that's a good state to be in. It's a good state to be in. It's not a morbid state. It's a good state to be in because it wakes you up, right? So it has to be a positive, positive in a sense. It has to be a building state, right? Whereby it, it, it pushes you right, into more action. Does not bring you down into this, you know, uh, like this doom and this gloom kind of uh, attitude, right? But it pushes you to start acting and start, and start do, you know, living your life in a way that you want to see it manifest in your afterlife. Okay, so the next one that we're into here is about the grave now, right? So now as for the grave. وَأَمَّا الْقَبْرُ وَالْحَالُ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ So as for the grave and the situation after death, right? So in this, so, so you see, in this subject, you know, فَأَذْكُرْ فِيهِ حَالَ رَجُلَيْنِ right? So I'm going to mention about the, the states of two men. Okay, the first man, right, the first man that I'm going to speak about, Imam Ghazali says, the first man I'm going to speak about, right, he, he is, you know, some of the, is one of the righteous, right? So one of the righteous, who said that you know وَذُكِرَ عَنْ وَذُكِرَ عَنْ بَعْضِ الصَّالِحِينَ أَنَّهُ قَالَ so some of the writers they said that رَأَيْتُ سُفْيَانَ الثَّوْرِ فِي النَّوْمِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ I saw Sufyan al-Thawri in my in my sleep after his death فَقُلْتُ كَيْفَ حَالُكَ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ 
And so I said to him, you know, how are you? You know, what's your what's your state? And this is what they always do, mashallah. When they see anyone, you know, after their death, they ask them, how are you? Right? How are you? How 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 are you in your grave? How how are you doing? You know, subhanallah. Right? And so he said, you know, subhanallah. So he said, either to 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 say na to say na Sufyan al Thawri, how are you, O Abu Abdullah? How are you after your death? Right? And so he turned away from me. Right? He turned away from me, and he said. Um, and he says, "Laisa hada zaman al kuna." I kuna meaning kuna meaning it's not a time for it's not this is not after after death it's not a time for you to say um, kuna. I kuna meaning the kunya. You know what's a kunya in Arabic? I kunya is basically saying Abu Abdullah. I Abu Abdullah is a kunya, right? So he said after death no one will be called by their kunya. I you you call them by their names. Right, so you see, this is not a time no more for here. It says in English, agnomens. If I learn a new word, eh? agnomens. Right, agnomens is kunya. Right, kunya is basically Abu Abdullah, you know, Abu Abu uh, Abu Qasim, as how as how Rasulullah is known by, um, you know, Um Fulana, Um Fulan, and so on. Right, so you see, mother of so and so or father of so and so. Right, it's it's a, it's a respectful way of speaking in the Arabic language. So is that how in English we would say Mister and Missus, right? So Mister Tan, you know, or Missus, you know, so and so, or Madam, right? You won't call someone who is of station, or of age, or above you by their first name, right? So you will just you will call them by a Mister or Missus, right? or a Madam, you know, uh, or a Miss, right? But you won't you won't say their name directly, right? So in the Arabic culture, right? Uh, similarly. To call someone by their first name, especially if they are someone of standing or someone of age, someone above you, right, that is considered to be of bad etiquette. Right, that is considered to be of bad of bad etiquette. Right, rather you need to at least have an address. And how do you address them? Right, that is called a kunya in the Arabic language. A kunya. Right, so you so and everyone should and everyone should have a kunya right, by which you can address someone by. Right, so um, uh, so the kunya right, that that uh, was for Sayyidina Sufyan al Thawri, right, you would say Abu Abdullah. That is his kunya. So he said, this is you no know, after death is not a time for kunya because we've all gone, gone gone to the same state. Right, so there's no kunya in this in 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 the afterward. Right, Allah alam, you know what he means. So he changed his question and he said, how is your condition, ya Sufyan? Right, so he called him by his first name. What is your condition, O Sufyan? Right, and then to which he responded, I right, in for your tree, and he said, I looked at my Lord directly, and he said to me, Welcome, enjoy my good pleasure, O Ibn Sa'id, O son of Sa'id. You used to keep Virgil when the night turned dark, with many an ardent cheer and a steady heart. So draw near and choose any palace you wish. And visit me, for I am not far away from you. Subhanallah. Right, so again, in the um, uh, in the in, in in the dream that he saw Sayyidina Sufyan al Thawri uh, in a blissful state, uh, whereby Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has already um, given Sayyidina Sufyan al Thawri his choice of choosing you know, a, a palace. This was someone, and why? Because of the night prayers that he used to do, right? N- uh, night, the night prayers that he used to do. Earned for him right, this this beautiful reward in the grave. Mashallah, the grave there are, there are two lights in the grave that will come and keep you company. The two lights in the grave are um, uh, Quran and night prayer. The two lights, two nights, uh, two lights in the grave, Quran and night prayer. All right. As for the second person, right, as for the second person, uh, so it was narrated that someone had, was seen in a dream, looking very pale. With his hands fettered to his neck, you know, basically chained, and uh, his his hands were chained to his neck, right? and he was asked, you know, what has Allah done with you, and what 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 has happened to you, and he looked pale, eh? Subhanallah. He was, so basically, he was in a, in a very in a terrible state. So he gave a poetic reply, right, whereby he said, "Gone is the time with which we used to play, and this time, and it is a time that plays with us, right? Meaning that it's it's uh it's it's, it's that plays with us, meaning that it is, uh, it's, it's torturing us. Right? He is in a state, it's a terrible state of being tortured. And there are many stories, you know, of people. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Hmm. 
Nah. And so there are many stories of, 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 of all kinds of people uh, and, and their states in their graves. And, and, and it's all seen in dreams, you know, of, like we mentioned uh, before about the man uh, who never left his siwak. And uh, so he was seen, you know, in a dream of, and he was asked, why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done with you after you have passed away? And the man actually said that when he, he, he didn't even realize he passed away uh, because of really how often he used to use his siwak. Right, that when he passed away, there was no, there was no like indication or no pain, nothing that he actually passed away, and he didn't realize he passed away. Only when he woke up in his grave, and the, the angels woke him up in his grave, then he realized. Then he then he, then he looked around for his siwak, and he was asking for his siwak. Then he realized he actually had passed away. You know, Subhanallah. And there many many stories, you know, of of um, the story of of the girl who it was a story of a girl who used to do all kinds of sins. I, and um, and there was once the mother, uh, and after she passed away, she felt sick, she passed away. But she used to, co- to commit all kinds of sins. So when she passed away, the mother really wanted to see her daughter in the, you know, how her daughter is in her grave. So the mother went to one of the mashaykh, you know, of the time. And she asked the mashaykh, the, 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 the sheikh, she asked the sheikh, you know, do you know if I could do anything um, for me to be able to see my daughter in her grave? And so the sheikh said to her, the Shaykh said to her, you know, go and read these verses and give out in charity. And so give out in charity and read these verses and you will be able to see your daughter in your dreams. So the woman did as, as she was told. And then um, that night, so she gave out some charity and she, um, and, 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 and she read some verses that the Shaykh told her to do. Then she saw her daughter in her dream. And when she saw her daughter in her dream, she saw her daughter, you know, wearing terrible in a uh, burnt clothes and being sh- and shackled, like shackled and chained in a terrible state. And her face was completely burnt and then her, her hair was burnt and everything. And so she said to her daughter in her dreams, you know, oh my daughter, what has happened to you? And she said, Allah's promise is true. I, all that I have done in the dunya, all that I have done in this world that I never cared to think twice about, you know, all that I neglected to do and that I was supposed to do and I didn't do, Right now, I'm facing the consequences of my actions and I'm seeing that Allah's punishment is true. So, of course, the mother waking up from that state, right, the mother is, uh, is horrified. Lah. Right, the mother is horrified. Right, so, she went to the sheikh again and she said, I saw, oh sheikh, oh sheikh, I saw, I saw, I saw my daughter in, her, in my dreams and she was in a terrible state, oh sheikh. And, uh, and then she said, oh sheikh, can you help me? Can you help me? I, what, what can I do right, to help my daughter in the grave? And the sheikh said, you know, there's only so much we can do because she has chosen her, she has chosen her life. Right? She has done what she has done. And she has done what she has done knowingly. She has, you know, she has chosen her path. Right? So the sheikh said, you know, well, you could, you could try, you know, I make dua for her. I'll make dua for her and I will and give out in charity for her. Right? And then, you know, may Allah have mercy on your daughter. Right? So after some time, the woman had a dream again. Of her daughter, a right? second time now a dream of her daughter, right? And then the, in the second dream, she saw her daughter, you know, dressed in very in a very beautiful long and flowy gown, and looking really bright and radiant, you know, and and, and, and joyous. And so the woman said to her daughter, "Oh my daughter, what has happened? Your your, your state has completely changed from the last time I saw you to now. You know, Subhanallah, you look you you look you look." Like you look amazing right now, and she said, "Oh my mother, oh my mother, there were a lot of us in the grave or in the cemetery who were being punished right, by our heedlessness and our negligence right in this dunya, but there was a man from amongst the righteous of uh, amongst the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa taala who came by our grave, and he began doing slawats on every single grave that he went past. At every single grave that he went past, he began doing slawats." On each of these graves, and by the slawat that he that, that he did, that was so strong and so sincere and so powerful and so uh, pure, by the slawat that he was doing on every single grave, all of us who were in the graves were forgiven by the slawat on the Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah uh, replaced the punishment that He had given us with uh, this this with what you are seeing me in, O oh my mother. And what this is this this bliss that you are seeing me in, Subhanallah. And you can only imagine, you know, Subhanallah. If there is a reward of someone who got the, you know, who got the effects of, 
slawat from someone else, right? Can you imagine? You cannot imagine. How will the reward be if that person herself did the slawat? You know, if that person herself uh, uh, increased in salawat, how, how would the reward be? You know, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Now, Allah Karim, Allah is so generous. Allah is so generous. Right? It's only because of our own negligence, right? That punishment, that, 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 that you know, human beings even get punished. May Allah protect us from any form of punishment. But it's only from the negligence and the arrogance and the heedlessness and the distance and the argument and the uh, uh, and, and and the showing off and all of the bad traits that human beings just uh, that the human beings drown themselves in that they end up being punished. But to enjoy the mercy and the the bounty and the blessing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is actually very easy. It's actually very, very easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. Alright. So then he says, so that, oh, that was one of the, um, there was, and there are many dreams, there are many dreams right, of people seeing others when they've entered the grave. And all of these dreams are all, you know, a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who are alive to do something about your lives. I right? do something about your lives. Um, so the second one he says here, now, as for um, uh, as for the, the other type of people, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, and then wahal the rajulain al akhar al akharain, as and 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 also the state of two other men, he said, whereby it was narrated by some of the righteous that I had a son who was martyred, and I did not see him in a dream until the night when Omar bin Abdul Aziz died. And Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he is the uh, great grandson of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? So, all the grandson of, of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? So, Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, right, he is from the progeny of that woman. There is a, there, there is a story in the time of Sayyidina Umar, right, whereby radiallahu, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whereby he was patrolling the night. And that was the way of Sayyidina Umar when he was Khalifa. He would go around in the night, he would patrol, you know, Medina in a sense, patrol in a sense, to see how are the people doing, right? So, so he would, you know, and during his this his, his nightly patrol, like he would he would find out a lot of things, right? So, of the things that he found out, right, was you know of of a poor woman like, who was struggling to feed her children, right? and she kept cursing Sayyidina Umar, right, saying that you know that Sayyidina Umar will answer for her poverty, that she's suffering being under his rule, and Sayyidina Umar found out about her. She had no idea she was, you know, she she had met Sayyidina Umar. And Sayyidina Umar found out about her state and he went back to the Bait al-Mal. He went back to the, 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 wealth, the house of wealth of the Muslims right? and, he, uh, and, and, he, and he got for her grain you know, um, that he carried himself. His servant was with him and his servant said to him, you know, Amir al-Mu'mineen, or, or, or uh, leader of the believers, allow for me to carry the grain for you. And Sayyidina Umar said to him, or snapped back at him and said to him, will you carry my sins on the day of judgment? Huh? Are you able to carry my sins on the day of judgment? And you're not able to carry my sins on the day of judgment, so let me carry this grain myself, right, for I deserve this. Right, and then he carried the grain to the house of the woman, and then he, you know, he, he uh, cooked the grain for the woman and, his, and her family, and he served them. And to the point, the woman herself said, uh, the woman herself said, you know, if uh, you should be the Khalifa and not Omar, and the likes of you should be the Khalifa and not Omar, but it was Sayyidina Omar, mashallah. It was one of his night patrols that he found out about the woman. And he ensured that my, that food was given to her house every um, you know a regular on a regular basis. So it was basically one of his it was during one of his night patrols, right? Whereby he went by uh, and he he found out a lot of things amongst the Muslims when he would walk around in the night uh, patrolling Medina. Whereby he even found out you know about he heard a woman in her own house saying you know verses verses of poetry, you know about how she missed her husband. And how you know she has her desires, you know, as a, as a woman, she has her own shahawat, she has her own desires, and how only her fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala has stopped for her, you know, from from doing the unthinkable, you know, in uh, and, and, and and has forced her to have her to, to, to preserve her modesty and her chastity. So you know, Omar even heard the kind of poetry that was being said, you know, from the house of a woman, and then from there he made it a condition. That all because the woman's husband, the woman's husband had gone off for for jihad, 
So then he made it a condition like, of a maximum time period a man can be away from his family like, because of jihad. Like, so he, made it, he, he, placed, he put in place a rotation system like, so that not, no one person is away from their family for too long. Like, they will have to come back you know, after a, a particular period. So Mashallah is all from his, from his own night patrolling. Like, that he learned all of the things that was going on in the Muslim community that otherwise they would not have voiced out to him uh, as the Khalifa. You know, so one of his night uh, patrolling, he went past a house, in the famous story, he went past a house uh, whereby he overheard um, a mother speak to her, to her daughter, you know, saying that to her daughter, you know, you know, add more water to the milk. You know, add more water to the milk uh, so as to increase the amount of milk. And the daughter said, no, my, my mother, Amirul Mu'minin, Sayyidina Umar, Amirul Mu'minin, has prohibited us from, has prohibited us from doing that, oh, my mother, I, because that is, that is cheating the Muslims. And the mother said, is Amirul Mu'minin here? I, can he see you do this? I, can he see you add water to the, to the milk? He's not here. And the girl said, but Allah is here and Allah sees. And Allah is here and Allah sees and I won't do it, oh mother. So Sayyidina Umar, he is impressed by the girl. <laughs> He's impressed by the girl. And when you're impressed by a girl, what do you do? <laughs> marry her to your daughter. <laughs> right, so marry, marry her to your, to, your, to your son, Afwan. Marry her to your son. So Sayyidina Umar, you know, he marked the house and then he went back the next morning and he looked, looked among his sons to see who of his sons, right, who of his sons is not married. Right, so he had one son who was not married and he said to his son, Come, I, I have a bride for you. <laughs> so he goes to the house and he had marked out. And he proposes um, to the to the girl, right, for his son, right? and it was from this marriage, right, between this girl of taqwa, right, this girl of taqwa who refused to add water to the milk because Allah sees. It was from this marriage um, to the son of Sayyidina Umar that came Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Right? Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz from the lineage of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz is known. To be the, um, it was he is known to be one of the righteous caliphs, I right, in Islam. Right? He was a caliph, eh? so he was one of the righteous caliphs in Islam. And it was said that during his reign, when he was the the the, the caliph, right, he ruled like like his ancestors, and right, Omar ruled, right? and but he he ruled to such to such an an you know a, a level that you know that they said that during his reign there was no um. There were, there, was, there were no poor people at all in the empire of the Muslims. In the entire Muslim empire, there, was no, there, was no poor, there were no poor people because zakat was fulfilled fully and completely to the point they would collect zakat and there would be no one to give the zakat to. There would be no one to give zakat to. That was how, that was how amazing the time was Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz. You know, subhanAllah. Um, and also about Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, <laughs> Habib mentioned this lah that when he, when he was a caliph, I think he was caliph for about two years, very short, two years or two and a half years. He was caliph. Um, when he was caliph, uh, and Habib mentioned that Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, that he he would spend all of his time, and uh, all of his time, uh, serving the Muslims, that he never had to uh, take a bath from Janaba, except for two times, in the entire time he was caliph. Because he had no time. He basically had no time to go into Janaba. You know, subhanAllah. And he, he, he had no time to go into Janaba. Now because of really round-the-clock work, you know, of being the caliph uh, and being the, being the one who is the servant of the Muslim Ummah. And that is following exactly the way of, of Sayyidina Umar. Sayyidina Umar, you know, said in, in, a, in a narration, right, that, you know, that he never sleeps. Sayyidina Umar never sleeps. Because he said that if he sleeps in the day, the, the, the Ummah will be lost and if he sleeps in the night then Umar will be lost so no, no day sleep and no night sleep because no time to sleep <laughs> no time to sleep subhanallah and so anyway um, someone saw so uh, when says when Umar bin Abdul Aziz passed away uh, he said I, I saw him that night so I said oh my son have you not become a corpse he said no but I have been a martyr so I am alive, sustained in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said, what has brought you here? He replied, the, pro- the, proclamation, uh, was, uh, the proclamation was made to the people of heaven. Let no prophet, no champion of truth, no siddiq, and wala siddiqun, and wala shaheedun, 
I and no martyrs stay away from the funeral service of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So therefore, I came to attend his funeral service, and now I've come to you to greet you with the salutation of peace. You know, Subhanallah. Right, meaning that you know when when he was cried out in the in the in the world of the barzakh, right, in the world of the graves, right, he was cried out in the world of the graves that all, nobody should be should be should be absent from the janaza. A prayer of Omar bin Abdul Aziz, or this is the Surah Janazah of Omar bin Abdul Aziz. So everybody in the in the Barzakh went to attend the Janazah prayer of Sayyidina Omar bin Abdul Aziz to show how great he was as a man. No, subhanallah, subhanallah. Even 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 the, them enjoying the bliss in the in their graves, the prophets and the you know and the Siddiq and the Shaheed, right? Them enjoying whatever they are on, enjoying, you know, in uh, in their graves. The, even that enjoyment I, is, cannot be compared to them going to attend the funeral prayer of Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Right, so, mashallah. Um, and then after that, he went to go and see his father. Lah. Right, so, basically, his son, who had been marching, did not come to see him at all until he had to go and um, attend the funeral prayer of Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And since he's there, he went to go and see his father. <laughs> My answer, mashallah. Right, so, as for the other person, so, so, so again, you know, um, see the martyrs, right? The martyrs, they are not, uh, they, they don't decompose, right? The martyrs do not decompose. Those who memorize Quran do not decompose. The earth does not eat the body of those who memorize Quran. Uh, Subhanallah. Um, you know, uh, it was said that that you know several uh, decades ago, if I'm not wrong, several decades ago, I think 1930s, I think 40s, um, there was a huge flood. Right? It was said there was a huge flood at Uhud. In uh, in Saudi Arabia, there was a huge, huge flood at Uhud, and and because of this huge flood, you know, this 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 is called a, a sail. Uh, a sail in Arabic is is like a flash flood, uh, and it's, and flash floods are very dangerous, right? Because they, they 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 will drag everything in their path and they'll break everything in their path. In Tarim, it happens very, you know, it happens every now and then, a flash flood. Uh, it will just it will just come and it will it will run through the land, uh, and it will it will break everything in, in its way. Right, so it, um, it was said that at Uhud there was once there was a sail, right, there was a, a flash flood, right, and uh, and this flash flood caused for the graves of the martyrs of Uhud to be unearthed, right, the flood, right, the flood opened up all the graves of the martyrs of Uhud, and this was more than a thousand four hundred years after Rasulullah uh, I mean in, in Hijra. It was a thousand four hundred years down the road. It's, it's, it's really basically it's our times, the modern times. It happened, and there were people who were there present who saw the uh, you know the the, the 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 unearthing of the martyrs of Uhud, and there were people who were there present at that time who saw Sayyidina Hamza with their own eyes. They saw Sayyidina Hamza with their own eyes because his grave was opened up, you know, by the flood, and they saw him, you know, as how as how he had been killed, you know, that, that he was speared right, through his chest. And then his uh, his 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 his, his, his uh, chest was opened up, and his his heart was taken out, and there was how Sayyidina Hamza passed away, right? But, and they saw him exactly as he was, as if he just died, right? There was nothing. His there was no form of decomposition, no form of corruption, no form of anything that happened to his skin, nor his bones, nor his blood. Every, even his blood was still red, as as it was red. You know, as if he was just um, speared to death, as if, you know, Subhanallah. This is the way of the martyrs. Eh? They don't. They, they will not be the true martyrs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They will not. Uh, they will not be touched by the earth at all. Subhanallah. This is why he said when he saw his son, he said to his son, you know, oh my son, have you not become a corpse? You know, how come you're still you're still well and alive? And he says because I am a martyr, oh my father, and therefore martyrs are alive. Right? We are sustained, as Allah Himself says in the Quran. Do not say about those who are killed in the way of Allah that they are dead. No, they are alive. Right? They are alive and they are um, being sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, as for the, the other person, right, the Imam Ghazali speaks about, it is related that Hisham bin Hassan once said, a young son of mine died. I saw him in a dream. He appeared as a grey-haired old man. So I said, oh my son, what is this grey head condition? He replied, when so and so approached us, hell emitted a sizzling groan at his approach. 
So we all turn grey without exception, and we take uh, we take refuge with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from the painful punishment. And this is basically um, uh, as Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself says in the Quran, a day that will make the children, <laughs> a day that will make children turn white and with white hair. And Subhanallah, um, Allahumma Salli Ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So, so, so just just to hear the groaning of the hellfire, is to hear the groaning of the hellfire. Uh, you will hear you, a person the, 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 you, a person will turn grey, subhanallah. So you can't even you can't even imagine how how the hellfire is. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an easy time inshallah in our graves. May Allah make our graves cool, make it light, make it bright, make it uh, uh, illuminated with the light of the Quran the light of night prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, preserve our bodies in our graves. May He preserve our bodies in our graves. Uh, in subhanallah you know in, in all forms of goodness and the people in the barzakh they actually they actually go around visiting themselves visiting each other right so when you go to the when you go to the barzakh your family members who've gone this is what it's been said you know when you go to the barzakh the the, 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 the world of the graves your family members who've been who've been gone earlier before you they actually greet you <laughs> because you've come into another another world it's like you know when you go to another country and your family members in that country, they will come and they will come and visit you at the airport, right? They will, they will come and you know welcome you because you've come from a far place. So when when someone you know uh, transits from this world to the next world, your family members who are already in the next world, uh, they are waiting for you, <laughs> and they're waiting for you to see, you know, if you have if you're okay and if you made it, you know, okay, inshallah. Also on that on that count, you know, about uh, reading about reading recitations for the people of the grave, you know, subhanallah. Um, and, and I'm just going to mention this because of this. Uh, there are there are fitness out there of, of how people would nowadays they 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 try to discourage people from reading, um, from reading recitations for those who have passed away, and and they and they cry all kinds of things. <laughs> they cry all kinds of bid'ah and, and innovation and whatsoever with regards to this. And I hope that no no one here you have fallen into their into, into into their whispers and believe their whispers. I don't believe their whispers. I, but you know, rather uh, the way of the righteous, the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is to you know to place uh, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself placed plants on graves because why the plants do zikr, and by the plants doing zikr, the zikr benefits the people in the grave. Right? It, it has uh, the, the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala descends on the people in the grave by the zikr of the plant. And the scholars say you know if it is with regards to a plant doing zikr. Then what more a human being sitting there by the grave and doing uh, and, and, and reciting Surah Yasin or reciting Quran? You know, what more do you think, you, how more do you think it will benefit the people in the grave? And you know, subhanAllah, this is why, you know, in some parts of, this, of the Islamic world, that whenever they bury the dead, they will, they will all sit around the grave that the dead was just buried and they will, they will do a khatam there and then. Right? They will distribute a juice between the people and they will do a khatam there and then at the grave site itself. And then, the, and then the reward of the khatam, inshallah, be given to the pe- to the person in the grave. I, there was a there was there is a story, you know, subhanallah. And all the stories you can find in 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 a in this is a particular book by Darul Mustafa on the proofs of Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah. Right, the proofs of Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah meaning that because of of our time, of people saying all kinds of things being permissible, impermissible, and so on. And then so Darul Mustafa, you know, um, basically uh, did an abridgment or a, or a summary of a, of a larger book on all the proofs. You know, of of in 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 from Quran to Sahih Hadith to the words of the scholars and the righteous right, on certain practices. Right? And one of the practices that they addressed in that book was recitation uh, of the Quran or dhikr for the deceased. Right? And so they, they, they did mention in the book that to recite Quran um, for the deceased. I'm, I'm just going to go through this because you know, in case anyone here has you know doubts about it, or you meet people who are very adamant. You know, against not doing it. You know, but being being rude about it. In fact, and some people are just very rude about it. You know, so um, uh, right. So 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 the so so so, so this question. You know, on this question on um, on on being able to recite for the deceased. Eh? Right, the or the hukum, the hukum, the ruling. Right, if someone wants to recite Quran, right, for a deceased, the ruling is permissible and in fact encouraged. And that is the first ruling. Nobody can say that it is haram because nobody can say that it is haram to recite Quran. Unless you're on your menses or unless you're in the toilet. And that's obvious. 
right? So, um, but other than that, other than being on your menses or being in the toilet, right? If you want to recite Quran, recite as much as you want. Nobody can say, nobody in the history of Islam can say it is haram on a Muslim to recite Quran when she's on her tahara, you know, and when she is, um, you know, not in the bathroom, right? Or disrespecting the Quran, nobody can say it is haram to recite Quran. It is, in fact, a bid'ah to say it is haram to recite the Quran. Right, for no, for, you know, uh, without any Sharia reason of saying that. That's first. The, 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 the next thing is to recite Quran for a date, right? It's, it's definitely permissible. Nobody can say it's impermissible. The next question is the reward of your recitation, does it reach the date or not? Right? Or is it that it just stays with you? Okay, then down here, okay, down there, the, the scholars differ. Some scholars say that it does not reach the date unless you're the child of the dead person. Right? And some person, some scholars say, that yes, it does reach the dead, right? Um, because Allah is generous and Allah can do whatever He wants to do. And Allah can give the reward to whomsoever He wants to give, reward, give the reward to, right? So, the scholars differ on this, on this, on this point. It's not, a, uh, it's, not a, it's not a big deal because someone gets a reward. <laughs> either you or a dead person, right? So, it's, it's all good. It's all good, right? So, either you get the reward or a dead person gets a reward. It's all good. It's all good. And at the very least, um, the mercy of all, and it's not even least, it's, it's a lot. It's least, but it's not least. You know, at the very least, but it's a lot, in fact, that the person in the grave uh, receives mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your recitation. So even if the reward does not go to that person, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends on a place where Quran is recited. And the mercy benefits every creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, living and dead, right, onto which the mercy descends on. Right, that one, one can they can deny, and in fact, there's a story you know that is mentioned in the book of you know Adil Sunnah wa Jamaa, right, in the book of the the, the, the Dalil eh, of Sun as Ahli Sunnah wa Jamaa, whereby it is mentioned in the book that there was once a Sheikh right, who took the other opinion that meant you know that, that said that you know you can recite Quran, right, but it will not reach the deceased. And he took he took that, he was very strong you know on that opinion and. He took the opinion whereby he saw that you know that, that all of the recitation just goes to the people who are reciting and does not go to the deceased. So this year he was it this year he passed away. And when he passed away, you know, the the, the the narration goes, when he passed away, his students saw him in his grave. Right? I mean he saw him they saw him in their in their dreams. And they said, Oh our Sheikh, you know, how what has Allah done with you? How are you? And the Sheikh said, You know, you know what I used to say about how Reward of Quran does not does not does not does not reach the people in the graves, and they said, "Yeah, you you should be very strong about saying that." And the Shaykh said, "Well, I was wrong. It does reach the people in the grave. So can you all please read Quran for me?" You know, I began to read Quran for him. Right. So Allahu Alam. You know, in the sense, you see, if you read Quran for the people in the grave, what do you have to lose? Right, and you have everything to gain. Subhanallah. Now, what? So why are there people going around? You know, shouting, you know, shouting bid'ah, shouting innovation to people who want to recite Quran and do and do zikr. Let them be. They want to tahlil. They want to tahlil. Do tahlil lah. Do tahlil. Right? The tahlil saying la ilaha illallah is a good thing. It's a good thing. Nobody can say saying la ilaha illallah is a bad thing. Saying la ilaha illallah is a good thing. Whether it goes to the disease or not, it's a separate thing. It goes to somebody, <laughs> right? So the one who's saying it, alhamdulillah, he gets it. If it goes to the disease, Alhamdulillah, he gets it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's better than not doing anything at all. And even better than sitting down during a funeral and then beginning to gossip and talk and chit-chat and laugh as if no one just passed away. This is the, the musibah of our time. The, 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 the tragedy of our time is that if you've gone, you know, so there are funerals nowadays whereby because of the, all these naysayers out there uh, who keep saying, no tahlil, no zikir, no Quran, no this, no that, everything, no. So all know that what happens? Chit chat. Then chit chat what? Someone just passed away and then you're all on your dunya. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. Right? When someone just passed away, the most, the, what you should be doing is ibadah. Right? To remind yourself that one day you will be those, the, that person in that kafan and in that, in that, in that coffin. You know, subhanallah. I wonder whether we'll kaf, coffin comes from kafan. Eh? Allah um, alam. Uh, the the, the, the uh, questions here. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Can a wife who is on Idda visit grave of the husband while she is on Idda? She cannot. Okay, flat question. Eh? I wait until her Idda is over. I wait until your Idda is over. I right, then you can go out and do whatever you want to do. Right, so, but while you're on Idda, um, stay at home. Stay at home. That is the best uh, for a woman in Idda to stay at home. 
if she really needs to go somewhere to perform some duties, like you know, um, that that she cannot be, you know, freed of, and and this is the case of our of our society, whereby someone has to go and you know and work, or they have to go and get their own groceries, which in our time you really have to because you can just get it uh, delivered to your house to your doorstep, right? But if someone really has to go somewhere like to the doctors or something like that, then uh, they are to dress, uh, down. In a sense, to to dress, um, you know, in a in 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 dark colors, right? To not at all be attractive in any way, right? And then if was I mean, because now you're wearing a mask anyway, so your your face is covered, right? So then then to go out and do what you need to do and to come back, for the woman in Adda, the laws of Adda are strict. The laws of Adda are real. <laughs> the laws of Adda are in the Quran, right? It's mentioned. Adda is mentioned in the Quran. And demonstrated by the Sahabiyat around Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but it is unfortunate that in our time that um, Muslims no longer take adda seriously, the adda of divorce and the adda of death. There are two addas for women. Eh? It's all uh, uh, hukum. It's all hukum in the Quran. Inshallah. Okay, uh, I'm not saying anything uh, new or something. <laughs> it's, it's all hukum. I'm just saying hukum. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay, we're going to start there for today. Wa sallallahu ala sallana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Al-Fatiha, anna Allah rizqana wa nafi'an wa amalan khawasim is'ain. Wa dalala al-Quda wa yisaru bi qabin al Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa ila arwahi ma'ani min al-Mashaykhina. Wa zabil haquqi alayna wa ila hawa al-Burdin nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Al-Fatiha.